Em essência, todos esses itens tinham algo em comum. Algo pequeno que cada vez ficava menor. O circuito integrado ou microchip. Ou simplesmente chip. Anything that human beings interacted with could contain a microprocessor and could become, at least in a tiny way, intelligent. And so in the 80s, that process first became possible and ubiquitous because the chips got so cheap. Vamos voltar, já que isso se tornou possível naquela década. O que é exatamente um chip? É uma placa de silício com cerca de um centímetro cúbico no qual são inseridos transistores microscópicos e fios de conexão. Os transistores agem como chaves que controlam o fluxo da corrente nos fios. Já o silício age como um semicondutor que permite aos transistores processar o código binário computacional, ligado para um, desligado para zero. O número de transistores no chip determina a potência e o custo. This is a microchip. It is a Z80 processor, very common in the 1980s. It had maybe 10,000 transistors on it. And to understand how revolutionary that is, you can look at this board. This is what we used before there were microchips. Each one of these little cans is a transistor. What you've done is you've taken these big transistors and you've etched them on a tiny piece of silicon and essentially you've had machines mass produce thousands and thousands of them for pennies each. This is a wafer, it's a 300 millimeter 12 inch wafer. And if you look carefully, you can see there are many squares on this wafer. Each one of these is a fully integrated circuit and uh, the cost of producing this wafer is constant. In 1965, you could only place uh, 10 or 15, 20 components on a single piece of silicon. Hoje, um único chip pode conter bilhões de transistores, e essa taxa de inovação foi prevista pela lei de Moore. Criada por um dos fundadores da Intel, a lei basicamente afirma que a cada 18 meses a complexidade de um circuito integrado dobra, enquanto os custos permanecem constantes. Assim, a performance aumenta, mas o preço não sobe. The magic of Moore's law was the fact that it happened on a regularly scheduled basis. So anybody who was trying to innovate, they would look and say, when will my product be able to come to the market? Oh, it'll come in two and a half years. What will the capabilities of the silicon chip be in two and a half years? And they would design their innovation to intersect that line, rather than only innovating on what was available at the moment. 